Welcome to Stellaris Galaxy Command. I am Sovereign, and today we are going to go over the basics surrounding the game, going through the basic UI elements. Those who know me or have seen my content before, you know this will be short and sweet, so make sure to like and sub. Let's get to it. We'll go over the UI going from top left, clockwise. Starting with your personal data here, there are a few things to take note of. This is a new server started yesterday, so the power levels are not too high just yet, as I am currently fourth on the server. It's a great time to start playing. So we have development. This is your total power, including the ships you have created. This is seen as a gauge as to how powerful you are. But if you are a mobile strategy vet, you know this number only goes so far, but it will give you an idea of your strength compared with others. Under this we have strength. This is a complete number of all of your fleets and dock ships power combined. Your total military strength. Bottom left is your alliance. We have change avatar bottom middle. If you have a ticket, you can change your avatar. There's only a few there. Check them out if you don't want to look like everyone else. Now to your title. So as you can see, titles in SGC are not just to show off. They actually come with bonuses depending on the one you use. From the one I am currently using, Death Emissary, which lowers my fleet maintenance cost by 1%, and the other I have obtained, Elite Commander, fleet evasion increased by 5. There are many more to try to obtain, and there are a few ways to obtain these. You can see in the light grey text under the title what it takes to obtain them. The data library shows all of your personal game statistics. It's a great place to compare with your alliance mates, see who has the biggest PP in the donut galaxy. Battle information is pretty self-explanatory. Ships lost, ships destroyed, how many battles won and lost, etc. Resources is just how much you have collected from debris, asteroids or mining planets. Next up we have your cabinet. Your cabinet is made up of officers. They give you bonuses depending on level and skills, as you can see on the left hand side. Each slot unlocks at a certain nexus level, as you can see in the bottom right, a level for production etc. Currently I have construction and military unlocked, which increases constructions and shipbuilding speed. Both of my ministers are level 40, so a flat 5.7% bonus is what they have, until I can upgrade their flagships. More on that later. Now onto a large part of the Stellaris franchise, you have ethics, and how your civilization's culture defines itself, or it's supposed to. If you're anything like me, you want the best of all stats and bonuses for your gameplay. Currently the meta is all green. The passive route, especially at the beginning, is better for all your resources. It's better for your research speed, tax revenue bonus. Compared to what the military side gives you, maintenance cost decrease, shipbuilding speed, all of that doesn't matter when you cannot keep up with the resource demand. Trust me on this. Lastly, we have achievements. The titles we saw earlier do mostly come from your achievements. You obtain these by completing certain parameters, like killing corvettes, for example. These are just for show, they do not give you any special bonuses. Now we move to the bar at the top of the UI. You see the flashing red icon? This indicates that you have a negative resource. When you press this, you can go into it, and see which resource you need to raise your stock of. It will show you how much time you have left until you run out, what options you have to gain this resource, and under effects you will usually have what building will be shut down, or what ships will be mothballed to get into the positive. Next we have your population, your primary energy credit income. Pressing this will bring up another window, showing exactly what your growth rate is and how much tax you are currently making for your people. As of right now, you cannot lower and raise tax, which I feel is a silly oversight. This window also shows how much food is required to keep your pop alive and growing. Energy credits, the currency of SGC, used in trade, building maintenance, ship maintenance, pretty much anything in the game requires energy credits, minus a small few. You do not have to worry about this for the first few days as your population is increasing. Just make sure not to buy anything too expensive and that you have your expenditure covered for a few days until your tax rises. Next we have your resources. This is a quick overview of how many resources you are losing and gaining every day. Metal is an absolute nightmare to balance at the moment, unless you have shut down or just don't build certain factories. Don't worry about it too much unless you're in the thousands. As long as you have a nice stockpile you'll be good till the higher levels. You can press on this to show more in-depth details, and click on the tabs to the left for filters. Also, the little eye on the right will show you exactly which buildings are using this resource, and how much they are using so you can decide to shut one down to get into the green. Top right we have the in-game real money currency, just used at the moment to speed up buildings and gain resources, officer levels etc. Really not that important as I said before I'm in the top 5, and I have only bought the battle pass keeping up with the whales. To the battle pass then. If you enjoy the game and are willing to spend a little cash, I would go with the elite battle pass. Costs you around 33 euros, but what you get is 3 months of nom noms. I won't go into too much detail, but you can check out what you get here. 
Biggest bonus is the upgraded Merc Fleet from the beginning to smash those pesky pirates. Okay, now the store. Microtransactions. No, the discount shop feels almost pointless. The items are pretty shit. Not what you would expect from a devs of Nova, but hey ho. Daily missions. Always complete these. They give you a lot of items and currency to really push you ahead. And it will only take you an hour at most a day to get these done just doing what you would normally do. Really, really important you do these. An event is your basic login bonuses, etc. Server-wide events. Haven't dabbled too much in them yet. It just didn't seem to work for me. Now we get to the most important three lines on the UI. Once this has been opened, you will have several tabs. First being the economy tab. This is your go-to for building and researching. Showing you how much time you have left to finish. If you need to set another build, you can speed up from here. Do the five minute free speed up. And also keep an eye on all your ships being built. And if you need to fill the slots. The fleets tab shows you just that, your fleets. All information regarding your fleets. The most important thing here is your supply amount. Which is the green line here. If you have your ship out and it's running low on supplies, it will no longer be able to fire and will be set back to your station mid-fight in PvE. Make sure these are full whenever possible. You can also create fleets from here if you wish. The trade tab gives you an overview of completed auto trades and also creating orders. I will have a guide on trade coming very soon. Please keep an eye out for that. And lastly, boosts. These will become more important later when building and research times go through the roof and also for PvP. I will also go over these full detail in another video. Now in the bottom right you have the galaxy map and system map. Use these to go into the respective maps. Galaxy showing you the whole map in its entirety. The system map showing you the system you are currently in. At the bottom middle we have pop-ups. Your station events and planet events will pop up here as a way to increase your ethics and gain items. Also your science fleet will come up here when idle and a red icon to remind you you have buildings shut down. The radar is used to spawn new pirates in your system if you have murdered them all. Kind of buggy but works most of the time. Okay, so on the bottom left we have the chat. Everyone knows the chat, or wishes they didn't. No need for an explanation here. Above this you have an icon that pops up when members of your alliance are asking for help. By pressing this icon frequently, it will speed up builds and research for everyone. Make sure to always do this if you're in alliance, it helps a lot. Speaking of alliances, our alliance band of brothers is looking for more active players. The number one alliance on server 3, we are looking for active players willing to learn and fight if need be. Must actively participate in alliance events. With the advert over, we now have the structure tab. This will give you an overview of all of your buildings. If you want to specifically build something to raise a specific resource per day, or your pop growth is getting low, you can press on specifics here and it will show you what you can upgrade. The inbox is mail and battle reports, trade reports, etc. nothing new here. And the function tab is a whole guide in itself. Basically, it's an overview of all options with a few differences. It has the leaders tab, which shows you a level and allows you to upgrade leaders, showing your current rank, ship designs, which will also be done in another video, and your setting options. Keep an eye out for those guides. And that's all we have for this beginner's guide. Make sure to like and subscribe if you found this useful, and remember, fly safe and avoid APS.